All right, guys. Uh, Jesse Cameron here. I've been currently, I want to show you guys kind of what I've been up to uh, for the past uh, couple months. Been using Trade Ringer since the day that it actually came out uh, with the economy. Um, for the first couple months, I was running uh, four or five different accounts. I've tested out uh, different balances, different currency pairs, different settings. And uh, about 80 days ago, 74 days ago, I think is exactly uh, when I opened up this account. I opened up a $100,000 account and I put 20, 25 different currency pairs on this account. And I wanted to uh, begin to track the progress of these pairs and find out what settings actually worked, what settings you know were not working for these currency pairs. Because I believe that the software trade ringer is very very powerful as long as you're using the proper settings for the proper account size right so um, I wanted to do an in-depth dive myself I know that uh, the developers and um, other people have uh, done their own research but I wanted to see from my own eyes see you know how this has actually been working see if I could adjust these settings see if I can find some you know these uh, maybe better settings or uh, that uh, I personally wanted to use. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, dive in to uh, this. Uh, I'm gonna provide you guys some details, some insight on why I chose uh, the pairs that I'm gonna be start running um, from uh, here on out. And uh, hopefully this is uh, provide some uh, you know good value for you guys. And then you all can make the decision if uh, you would like to run the currency pairs I'm running, or if you want to try out some other currency pairs, um, I highly, you know, <clears throat> so we're gonna just go ahead and dive right into this. So first off, I wanna show you guys that this is, uh, you know, I took all this, all these stats, and I'm about to show you these screenshots and the PowerPoint, the screenshots um, in, in uh, the Excel, and the Excel that I built uh, with my buddy, uh, was all all that information was taken off my uh, FX Blue Book account uh, verified? Uh, these are all the currency pairs that I was running, um, all the statistics, best trade, and everything like that. I took all that information off of uh, this uh, book, and uh, you can just uh, 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 export it as a Excel sheet. And then I just uh, modified the format of the Excel sheet to um, help you understand and see better on what uh, you know is actually really going on here. So you're gonna go ahead and minimize that, kind of dive in straight into uh, this, uh, the, the PowerPoint here um, and go over why I'm choosing the pairs that uh, I'm gonna choose here. So this is gonna be uh, the first sheet here. You can see all the currency pairs listed on the left-hand side. And what I did for the first section here is I sorted them by profit factor, right? So I want to distinguish, you know, which ones uh, are, are, are the most profitable. And when I think about being the most profitable, um, you know, profit factor definitely plays a huge role in that. I think the winning percentage also would play a role in that and, and the average, you know, win, uh, could kind of play, uh, you know, it does play a decent role, but I thought the main factor for looking at which currency pair is the most profitable would be uh, to look underneath the profit factor, right? So as you can see here, the top six uh, pairs with the best profit factor, meaning for every dollar they make, you know, this has uh, NZD USD has a profit factor of 4.37. So that means every dollar it makes, it's making $4.37. So for every, or I think I said that, for every dollar it loses, for every dollar it loses, you're making $4.37. That is just, I mean, that's amazing. I mean, we go down to some of the pairs that, you know, um, have been put out there to possibly run. AUD JPY has a profit factor of 0.97. Uh, USD JPY has a profit factor of 1.45. You know, we do have, I think, one up here, uh, AUD USD, you know, has a profit factor of 2.61. You guys can see here, um, what I'm just doing is I'm going through, to trying to categorize these, right? I'm going to pick out the top, like, six uh, pairs here, and then I'm going to see what, uh, how these top six pairs perform um, in these other categories. So category one was uh, the profit factor. Next, I wanted to uh, look at uh, the losses. You know, I don't want to be taking on a lot of losses, uh, obvious for obvious reasons. 
Uh, and if I do take a loss, I want to make sure that the losses are as small as possible. So what I did here is I uh, categorized all the pairs that I've been running uh, as the average loss per pips. So you can see here that uh, you know the top six pairs, AUSD a CAD, NZD CAD, AUD USD, NZD Swissy, CAD Swissy, and uh, the Swiss franc versus Japanese yen. Average loss per pips, USD CAD. The average loss is only 20 pips. You know, that's, that's, that's a pretty good. Um, yeah, the only average win is about 12, but uh, the average out of all of these, if you add, do the average of all 25 currency pairs, the average pip per win is 17 pips. So to be just a little below the, the, the average between all at 12 isn't too bad. Um, you know, we have AUD USD performing probably one of the best, 17.5 pips. That's right in the middle of the average between all currency pairs. And we're only taking a 23 pip loss uh, on average. So that's what I think about uh, this. I think that, you know, really when it comes down to it, yes, the wins uh, matter, but I want to make sure that I'm not actually losing a whole lot when I am taking a loss. And that does play a factor into, again, the profit factor here. Um, we can look at some other areas you know, net pips, uh, these ones that have the average loss per pips, um, not exactly in order, but they're pretty uh, up there for being the highest net pip uh, out of all the 25 currency pairs here. We have uh, USD CAD coming in at 1200. Um, you know, there's no other ones down here. I'm trying to look here. Yeah, I mean, nothing beats that. Um, next one would be 725. So that one's really the only one that's really out of line here, a uh, Euro CAD. But other than that, the next highest is going to be, you know, 760 pips NZD CAD. Um, so you're netting more pips than you're actually losing. Uh, we can look at some of the current pairs. We there were, you know, said that uh, maybe some other people maybe want to run uh, AUD JPY. You know, net pips, ne negative 791 pips here. You know, the average loss is 56 pips, and we're only taking a win of 16 pips. Uh, USD JPY and Euro JPY, you know, these are actually a positive pips, which is good. Um, you know, about 392 on Euro JPY and 206 on USD JPY. But I'd rather be running pairs that uh, are, are going to bring in more net pips. And that's uh, that's my personal opinion on this. So moving on to uh, the next final section here um, is uh, what I wanted to do in this section was organize it and find out what each pair was doing for you know consecutive profit and loss. I, I organized this section by consecutive loss. So meaning uh, Euro or NZD USD has only lost $32.40 before it took another win. So I'm not taking on huge losses, like maybe if I was running in GBP JPY, I mean GBP JPY lost almost uh, you know $6,557 in a row before it actually took profit. Yeah, it, it's made $3,000 in a row. So if, I mean, if you get on a lucky streak, you could have done that. Um, but uh, I know if I have, you know, a thousand dollar account, I know I wouldn't want to be running GBP, JPY on these settings um, that uh, were that were being ran here, right? Because I could potentially take a 6K loss before I'm going to take any profit. Uh, some of these other ones, USD, JPY. We come in here, uh, consecutive loss, it's lost, you know, $488 um, in a row. Uh, before it's even uh, taken taken a win. We can even, you know, look at the pips here. Pips are pretty uh, going to be pretty similar to the dollar amount. Um, you know, as you can see, uh, all the ones that have taken a lot of pips uh, as a loss are towards the bottom, and the ones that really haven't taken um, consecutive losses uh, that much, uh, pip-wise, are towards the top here. So, you may be thinking, you know, what lot size was I using on this? How is that determined? Well, I don't think it, that really plays too much of a role in here. It doesn't really depend, you know, on the lot size because we can look right here at the pips. It's just really about the pips and pips convert to uh, the dollars, right? So um, uh, that's kind of how I see here. I mean, consecutive profit. So I've made, you know, $300, 
before I've actually taken a loss on this on NZD USD. Uh, USD CAD. I've uh, you know I've made one hundred and fifty five dollars in a row before I've actually taken a loss, and it's only lost sixty five dollars. So I know that I'm more than likely not obviously no guarantees in anything, but I'm more than likely going to only you know uh, take tops of a sixty five dollar loss before I'm building up more of my equity in my account. Uh, if I was just running that one pair. This is uh, just insight on this page here for you guys. Um, next, I wanted to break it down to each currency pair. I want to see how many levels they were going. How deep were they going? Because the more levels trade ringers picking up, the more drawdown you're going to occur, right? The more drawdown you have, uh, the, the less time you're going to be taking at taking profit. Um, the, so if you're in, you know, five, six levels, it may take you, you know, a day, two days, maybe even a week to cost average out of all those trades. When you could be open up zeros, uh, level zero and one trades and be closing those a lot faster than it would to take, you know, a, a pair to get out of all drawdown on, you know, six or six or so levels. So I wanted to see, you know, what uh, each pair was opening up per level. So, um, as you can see here, all the green uh, boxes are uh, the lowest trades opened. So uh, the bottom three, or if they tied, um, it, it would uh, also be green. Uh, and then the red box is the highest amount of trades that have been opened between all the currency pairs. And uh, last is uh, gray, uh, the dark gray here. They never opened up that level, meaning in the past, you know, 74 days or so, um, these currency pairs on the settings that I'm about to show you have never opened up uh, these types of levels. So you can see a lot of these GBP pairs here have never opened up a level four. And you'll see why on, on the settings that I'm actually having. You know, so if you know you're never going to open up a level four, guess what you can do? You can go to uh, the Brent Blaze calculator and you can, you know, adjust that lot size to uh, accommodate only four levels or five levels. Give yourself an extra level. You only can do five levels. Instead of making sure that you can survive 12 levels, it's never gonna open up 12 levels. So you don't have to worry about that. Um, AUD CAD. Uh, we'll, we'll start with uh, one that I really think is gonna be one of the, uh, the pair that I'm gonna love the most is uh, USD CAD. USD CAD has never opened up a level five. It's, uh, you know, had the most, one of the most trades uh, it's tied with Euro AUD, one of the most trades opened up on level zero, meaning it has, you know, the most, almost, the third most uh, open trades on level zero. Um, you know, it starts to drop off here a little bit, but only one trade, one trade in the past. I've ran this all week through NFP week, um, you know, several, uh, three NFP weeks now. Um, I've gone through uh, Brexit stuff last week with the same settings here. And uh, it's only opened up a level four once. So uh, that's pretty incredible. <laughs> I don't know if you guys think the same, but that is, that is amazing to know because then I don't have to uh, try to adjust it to, you know, be able to uh, run, you know, nine levels deep. It's just, it's the odds of it opening up any more levels besides that is pretty rare. So, um, Again, uh, we could check out uh, Euro JPY. Euro JPY has, you know, opened up to a level six. Uh, Euro USD. Euro USD has opened up to a level six. So why would I want to be running pairs that, you know, get into higher levels more often than some of these pairs that have never even opened up a level five? Maybe if they, they've never opened up a level four. So you can see here, I mean, NZD USD. Look, it's, it's been the lowest green, right? It's opened up uh, the lowest amount of trades. So it's not a huge trade taker. It doesn't take a whole lot of trades, right? It's only taken 75 trades in the past. You know, that's about a trade a day. But having that said, it's, only, it's never opened up a level four, meaning you could place a higher lot size in the beginning and make more money because you know it's never going to go that down or you have a good chance of it never approaching that level four. You'll never have to approach a level four. All right. So 
after looking at all these stats, um, looking at, you know, some FX books that, uh, you know, uh, I've been running, not just all 26 pairs, but there's a, a few people that, uh, and me, myself, um, that have been running some of these pairs for uh, some time. And uh, looking at all that and everything that I've kind of gone through, I've narrowed it down to six that I think, uh, you know, um, for me, the six that I'm going to run. Um, I don't know if I'm going to run all six yet. Uh, I really have to determine, you know, it really depends on your account size. If you have a small account, you know, run the most, uh, you know, the, the, the conservative pairs here. But uh, I feel like I've narrowed it down to six that are uh, the best performers on the settings that I'm currently using with them. And as you can see here on the screen, NZD USD, NZD CAD, USD CAD, AUD USD, NZD Swiss, and Euro CAD. I think, uh, you know, those are the ones that I'm going to be looking to run. You guys can look at this data. I can uh, send you uh, the Excel sheets. I can send you my FX book. And from there, you can determine what you think is going to be best. Um, I'm just here to, uh, you know, tell you what I'm personally doing. And then from there, you guys can make the educated decision on what you want to do. So I'm going to dive into uh, these settings real quick. Um, I'm not going to go too in depth on these, but uh, as you can see, I have all the currency pairs that are running these settings uh, on the side here, on the right-hand side. Uh, weekly goal, always stay conservative on the weekly goal. Uh, equity protection, you know, same. Um, what I'm doing is starting lot size, uh, 0 0.01 per 1,000 uh, is going to be the starting point. I suggest going to the Brent Blaze calculator, finding what pairs you want to run, find out, you know, how many levels uh, they've gone deep, and then you can use that calculator to determine if you want to increase that lot size per 1K or if you want to just use the 0.01 per 1,000 um, like, uh, like I'll be doing. Uh, range between levels, 33. Uh, I know that uh, this is uh, going to be higher than what uh, we've been running in the past and stuff, but the FX markets are only going to start picking up. They're only going to start getting more volatile as I think we're going to start entering in the recession. People are going to start pulling their money out of stocks, bonds, and other places, and they're going to start putting it in the FX markets. And we've been at a historic low in volume in the FX markets for uh, a few years now. I think it's been about three or four three or four years now, there's not been a lot of volume. There's been a lot of sideways trending uh, going on. And I believe that's all about to change. Um, I believe that that's going to start uh, picking up. I believe that we're going to start seeing bigger moves in the market than normal. So I want to, you know, ensure that I'm going to have the best possibility of surviving uh, a big move in the market. If it's 200, 300, 400 pips, I want to put, you know, the odds in my favor because, those times do come, and uh, it may be every five years, every 10 years. It may be a rare occasion that it actually happens, but I want to make sure that uh, I can actually be able to survive that, all right? So then you go uh, range multipliers. This is default. This is on the default. Uh, max number of levels on all these is at eight. As you saw before, I've never opened up a level nine uh, with these settings. Um, going on, uh, it's actually supposed to be, go here, let's get rid of this. And then, uh, so again, these are the currency pairs that I've been running uh, for uh, these type of settings. And pretty much the huge difference here is you can see I have a position size multiplier of 2.2. And you may be thinking, wow, oh geez, 2.2, that's huge. What I'm seeing is that, you know, kind of referring a little bit back to the Ed Zimbardi strategy, as you open up more and more levels, the chances of the higher levels hitting your take profit only go up. So if I, all I would have to do is lower my lot size to, you know, the proper account size. And that's why the Brent Blaze calculator is amazing to determine on what your lot size is going to be with these settings and your account size. So you'll be able to survive, you know what you could survive. But as the levels, you know, open up, the chances of them hitting the take profit are more. So that's going to, why wouldn't I want a really high or a bigger lot size the further I go in, right? Of course, I'm going to want a bigger lot size the further I'm going to go in because the chances of that swinging and hitting the take profit are greater 
than it opening up the next level. And with that being said, my cost averaging then goes up. And if my cost averaging per trade goes up, my profit factor is going up. I'm making more money um, on, on those trades. So how I saw it is, yeah, let's increase that position size multiplier. You probably aren't going to be able to do, you know, I, I wouldn't do probably 0.01 per $1,000 at, uh, you know, with having the position size multiplier that big. But if you have a decent size account, I would say, you know, 20,000 or more, uh, I believe that, you know, running the position size multiplier 2.2 is going to be very beneficial. Uh, moving on, uh, different settings here. Um, the only thing that I changed here was the range between levels is 44. I, you know, these pairs were actually running. Yeah, these pairs were running on a smaller uh, level or range between levels. And I just found that they weren't being as profitable, right? They were getting into way too many levels, um, way too much drawdown. So I just increased that level range and uh, that's a, a level range of 44. Uh, Euro AUD, I took a massive hit. If you see my uh, FX book, uh, I think it was like the third weekend, uh, I took like a 5K hit on the account and that was all euro aud uh I, I was running the level range at 33 and then i increased it to 55 and it was still taking on way too much drawdown still opening up way too many levels so then i actually opened it up and started at uh, a range between levels at 77 and a position size multiplier of 1.8 uh, gbp pairs uh for these uh the range between levels is 77, and then I have the position size at 2.2. As you saw before, the GBP pairs have never opened up a level four, never opened up a level four. Um, it's either going to hit your stop loss. When you have your range between levels at 77, either you're going to hit your stop loss or uh, you know it's going to close out the trade um, for a profit, right? So what I found with the GBP pairs is actually a 15-minute time frame. It's been absolutely killing it with these settings. Um, and uh, that kind of goes into that and that kind of wraps it up. That wraps up all the settings for all these currency pairs, you know, it goes over, you know, all the stats here. Um, you know, if you guys want access to uh, the, the, the Excel sheet here where I break everything down uh, between, between the levels, you know, what type of level, the buy counters, you know, the, the sell counters and everything. I have all this information uh, that you guys can, you know, go ahead and look at again. Um, here's another Excel sheet showing uh, the, the profit factor and everything that I got from the FX Blue account. So that's uh, what uh, I personally think from here. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's been an amazing week. I can actually pull up the stats here and go to week. Let's go to, actually let's go to uh, symbols symbols and then filter and then I'm going to do uh, date range uh, last seven days actually want to go from the 13th filter so this was last week's results uh, running the software uh, on all these currency pairs here we're going to go ahead and, you know, sort by profit factor. I mean, some of these trades or some of these currency pairs never even took a loss last week. You know, 18 trades and never took a loss on AUD uh, CAD. Uh, NZD USD never took a loss. 19 trades, 19 wins. Um, but what I wanted to point it out was uh, the GBP pairs. So the GBP NZD. It's opened up 223 trades last week because it was on that 15 minute time frame. 15 minute time frame, you're going to get a lot more trades, but it still has an 84% win rate. That is just crazy. So yeah, you're going to be taking on a little more loss so that I wouldn't, you know, be running. I'm personally not running a GBPs, uh, you know, on a small account. Uh, if I'm going to be running the GBP pairs, it's going to be on a larger account. Um, you know, profit factor is still 1.56. Uh, I mean, during that Brexit news, I mean, when we saw a, a movement of 900 pips to still be profitable, I think that's amazing, right? We, it's just incredible here. So I'm going to stop talking to you guys. You guys will have all the data. You guys can make the well-educated decision you, you, on what you want to do. I just wanted to present this stuff.
for all of you and uh, I will continue doing my testing. I'll continue to tweak the settings to make every pair as profitable as I can and uh, may the trades be with you all.